Hello, my name is Matt Oswalt, and welcome to another Keeping It Classless Lab. Today we're going to be talking about Ansible, and specifically with respect to spine leaf topologies. Now, this is just going to be a quick demo. I put most of the information about this whole idea uh, into a blog post, so I highly recommend you check that out. There's a link in the description. Uh, head over to that, and it'll tell you most of what you need to know. What I'd like to do here is sort of show you the modules in action. So what, what I've done here is I've written up a big old playbook that basically does everything that I discussed in that blog post. The first idea that I'd like to sort of get across is that I want to gather topology information of a spine leaf topology. So what I've done is I've written a module called NXAPI Git Facts, and this module is specifically written for the Cisco Nexus 9000 platform. Uh, mostly because, you know, that platform is currently the only platform within Cisco's Nexus line that has that NXAPI uh, programmatic interface, uh, which I find to be, uh, you know, it, it's useful for these purposes. It's easy to use, basically. You know, I, I, I may use NetConf in the future, something like that, uh, but for now, this will suffice. The, the main idea is getting the topology information, which should remain the same regardless of what particular protocol I'm using. So to that end, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm writing a play, and we'll focus here on the top for, for now. This particular play calls my NXAPI Git Facts module, and it passes the usual information you'd, you'd expect, uh, username and password stuff, uh, the log file for any troubleshooting I want to do with this module, uh, and then also obviously passing the host name, which I'm storing in the inventory file. Um, and uh, that... Uh, the, the inventory group that I'm using is spine. And there are two IP addresses in that group, uh, 10.2.1.8 and 10.2.1.9. Those are the two spines in our topology. Now the output from this get facts module is very important because what this does is it returns the uh, information for each spine uh, that can uh, basically a dictionary that contains all of the connected leaves on that spine. Now, in this lab example, it's obviously going to be very small because we only have the one leaf uh, connected to it. But theoretically, the uh, information should just sort of expand the more leaves that you add. The idea here is to get as simple of a topology, you know, mapping as possible so that we can act on it. We don't necessarily need to know everything under the sun. We don't need to know everything that's, you know, something like CDP, for instance, would offer us. But we do need to know enough uh, about, for instance, how the spines and leaves connect to each other uh, and a little information about how to manage those devices. Uh, so CDP is a great use case for this, but what we need is a centralized repository of all of this information. So to that end, what I've done is I've written a module that stores that in the INS facts register. So the output of that module will get stored here. And when we debug this information, we'll be able to see that topo key that you see I'm referring to here. That's where I'm specifically storing the topology information. Now you might expect that something like NXAPI get facts would be suited for basically fact gathering, and you're absolutely right. So I actually return quite a bit more information than simply topology information. Uh, I can return hardware information, for instance, uh, enabled enabled protocols, I mean, anything you can think of, uh, you know, in terms of fact gathering for network devices, I'm doing here. So the idea uh, behind this topology gathering uh, is, is to obviously do something with it, right? We want to be able to make changes or perform some sort of verification. So after that, what I've what I've done is I've written an OSPF mod, uh, an OSPF play um, with a new OSPF module. So NXAPS, uh, NXAPI OSPF is another module I've also written. And that module is essentially an OSPF specific fact gathering module. The idea is to gather the OSPF configuration of specific interfaces, um, and namely a specific relationship. So for every single spine leaf relationship, I run this module. Now, the way that we do that is we actually refer to the insfacts.topo uh, register that I stored all of the information in the first play, as you can see. So I'm iterating through this dictionary, and I'm storing the resulting register for this module in this INS OSPF register. At the end of that, I just simply you know dump all the information in that register just so that we'll be able to see it, and, and I'll walk you through the information contained there. But um, also, we're you know making uh, making decisions based off of the information contained within. So what we can do is we can compare the parameters between two switches to make sure that they check. As you know, OSPF needs to match on certain parameters in order to become neighbors. So this is a great way for us to verify. Uh, or I guess troubleshoot if there is a neighborship problem. 
uh, things like making sure the area check uh, uh, is 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 correct um, between two switches. Uh, the hello intervals, the dead interval, the timers uh, there, uh, you know, the stub flag, making sure that's checked. Uh, uh, if it's checked, then make sure it's checked between two switches. Basically, all these parameters need to check uh, or need to match between two switches. And this module is a great use case uh, for making sure that those check across an entire spine leaf topology. So the idea, of course, isn't to simply troubleshoot on, on one pair of switches uh, uh, at a time because, you know, we could just simply do that by SSHing into those switches and checking ourselves. The usefulness here is A, being able to uh, check across the entire spine leaf topology with the same configuration essentially, um, and B, um, not have to really uh, react to a problem, for instance. What we can do is run something like this in between configuration changes to make sure that we didn't screw anything up. So now that I've given you the grand tour through this playbook, what I'd like to do is just, you know, simply run this, explore the data that we get. So let's do Ansible Playbook, and we'll do Playbooks, verify OSPF.yaml. And as you can see, it's running our play, uh, and it's going to output a bunch of information. I'm not going to try to catch up with it. I'll scroll back once it's finished. There we go. So we had our two spine switches, and let's go to the very beginning. The first thing that happened was that it, uh, it grabbed all the topology information and stored it in the register per the module. Basically, I'm, I'm specifying very specifically what I want to be in this table inside the module. So the only thing that we really care about is the information you see here. So these two uh, sections um, are here because we have two spine switches. So if we only ran this on the single spine switch, we would simply just see this. Now, what's contained within this is really this information. This is really what's interesting to us. Because what I've done is I've created a key of the host ID for this leaf. So the leaf that ends in HJF, and I'm masking the beginning here, but um, the key that ends in HJF, that leaf switch, here are all of the values pertinent to that. So the local interface on this spine, namely dot eight, that we are using to connect to this leaf switch is port channel 100. And the interface on the leaf that the leaf is using to connect to the spine, remote IF, is port channel 100 as well. We're also pulling the IPv4 management address of this leaf in case we want to do things with the leaf directly. Uh, gathering topology, we don't need to do that just yet, but uh, it is useful, especially for certain things like uh, you know verifying protocols that are running on the leaves, that kind of thing. So this is really useful because what we can do is we can First off, have a per spine topology. So all of the leaves that are connected to this spine would be contained in this section, basically repeating this section for each leaf. And uh, we also have it on a per spine basis. So each spine repeats, you know, here. So we're treating these topologies independently. I'm referring to these in my blog post as spine domains. Essentially, independent domains of configuration and verification, which is useful because really that's how spine leaf uh, topologies work. They're meant to be treated individually um, because those you know, spines generally shouldn't be connected to each other. So now that we have our topology, the next step is dumping all of the information that we have from OSPF. Um, so that section is down here, and this is the second play, if you recall. So this particular section is here, this OSPF section. So the, uh, there's, there's two parts of this, and obviously, as you can see, uh, the key that we're using is the same. So this represents the entry for the leaf that we have. Again, if we had more than one leaf, we would see multiple sections that have this entry. Uh, it would just use a different value for this. It's a great way to keep our, 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 uh, our switches unique. Um, by the way, we could store all kinds of information about this, uh, you know, host ID in some kind of database elsewhere. For instance, if there was a different username and password on each switch, that could be maintained in some sort of a YAML file on our Ansible server. Very easy to do that. Uh, but really, any unique key will do. I just chose host ID because it's pretty much guaranteed to be unique. Now, specifically with OSPF, you can see that we have another host ID here. Now, this host ID is, is different. This host ID is meant to reflect the host ID on the switch that these details pertain to. So because we're looking at the local uh, switch, what we're doing is we're showing the host ID of the spine it's connected to. 
uh, and then the leaf, namely here, is uh, is that remote host ID. So the host ID that you've been seeing is the leaf. We put the host ID here just so that we can make sure that we keep track of what OSPF parameters these are. So these OSPF parameters are on the spine, and that's why we have the spine's host ID there. This is the remote switch, so we're having the OSPF parameters of the remote switch and the remote host ID there. So uh, assuming you're not sufficiently confused by now, uh, I would like to draw your attention to the, t to the OSPF information in general. As you can see, uh, everything seems to match uh, where it should anyway. The area is the same. Um, none of the stub or not so stubby area flags are set. And again, you're comparing them to down here. The, uh, this, this parameter would need to match this parameter. Um, you know, mask length and you know, everything's in the right subnet. Uh, and then the timers are, yeah, here they are. So dead interval and hello interval. So those all match. Um, and if we were to SSH into the switch right now, we would see that we have a neighbor and everything's hunky dory. Uh, so the last section of this, uh, oh, you know what? I left. This is good. This will save some time, actually. So, what, for, before I before I <laughs> confuse you even further, uh, the the thing that we just checked here, it's very important that we look at this. This little piece of information here is an Ansible uh, is Ansible's way of saying this is the inventory item that I'm reporting on. Namely, in in the lingo for this demo, this is the spine switch that this information pertains to. So. The connection between this spine switch, .9, uh, and this leaf, host ID HJF, everything looks good. The OSPF neighborship should be up, and if we were to SSH into this spine and show OSPF neighbors, we would see this leaf as an OSPF neighbor. Now, in the last time that I, you know, the last time that I demoed this, I demoed it for some folks, and I showed what would happen if I changed, for instance, the area ID that that spine interface was connected to. Well, that information is actually down here. So as you can see, this 10.2.1.8 uh, is the other spine switch. And if you look closely, the area is 0.0.0.1 uh, .0 for the spine switch. And the leaf is obviously still at 0.0.0.0 because it's the same leaf switch we looked at in the last, uh, last entry. So we should not see an OSPF neighborship here. And if we scroll down even further to where our debug statements were, you can see that for dot nine, there was a skip. And this is basically Ansible's way of saying, you, you know, I, I put in a when statement, and that when statement did not validate to true, because if you recall, those when statements said, if those two parameters do not match, then show a debug. Uh, so it skipped for dot nine because that spine was successfully connected to its leaf, or all the OSPF parameters between the two checked out. However, for dot eight, that was not the case. So we're seeing this debug primarily because those OSPF areas do not match. And if you look at the message down here, we can see this is the case. Uh, and uh, I also, by the way, I set the stub flag on that area, so the stub flags also do not match. So all of the all of you know the other checks uh, check out because I didn't mess with any of that information. But what we can do now is we can actually fix uh, fix that problem. Let's go into the uh, 10.2.1.8 switch. And fix the issue. OK. So let's uh, go to interface port channel 100. And the command should be IP router OSPF clo area 0. Now, I haven't messed with area 0 um, in any way, so just simply setting it to area 0 should fix the problem. So we do a show IP OSPF oops, neighbors, and you can see that we now have a neighbor. Um, and you know what? Let's just... Uh, I'm going to show you what it was like before because I kind of forgot to do that. Show IP OSPF neighbors. Okay, now we can see that the neighborship is not up. So now we can do IP router OSPF clo area two. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We'll be able to see the neighborship come up. I'm sorry. Not two. Area zero. Helps to remember the right area. Very soon 
we should be able to see full DR. Perfect. So we have our full neighbor relationship. Now the most important thing is to write our configuration, of course. And let's get out of the switch and back to our terminal. Let's rerun the play. Okay, and what we see here is just a whole bunch of skips. So again, when you see a skip, that means the when statement in our play did not evaluate to true. Um, and since the when statement said if this parameter and this parameter do not match, then raise the, de the, the debug message. Um, since that didn't validate, everything gets skipped, which is a good thing. This indicates that all of these parameters checked out, um, and there's no reason to raise an alarm or take any action uh, based off of that. So this is sort of one application of using the topology information. The important thing is storing the topology information. What are we getting out of our to, uh, out of our spine leaf topology in terms of data, right? Is there anything else that we need from this from from this perspective? Um, so that's what that's kind of what I'm working on right now. There's there's plenty more to do with with respect to this module, but uh, you know hopefully hopefully this is a good demo. Again, the blog post for this uh, entire thing is contained within uh, the description for this video. So I highly encourage that you check that out, and uh, and there's visuals and and cool stuff like that. Thanks for watching.